So today I'm going to be talking about aliquot sequences and its relationship to Catalan's conjecture about aliquot sequences. So the first question I want to answer is, what is an aliquot sequence? Aliquot sequence is a sequence where any term is equivalent to the sum of the proper divisors of the previous term. Okay, what's sum of the proper divisors? Well, let's represent right here with this equation. The sum of the proper divisors of an integer n is equivalent to the sum of all the divisors of n minus n. So what this basically means is that the sum of the proper divisors is equivalent to the sum of all the divisors except for n. You may be a little bit confused, so I'll just give you an example. So we're going to make an aliquot sequence starting with the number 9. So S, sum of the proper divisors of 9 is equivalent to 1, 3, and 9. But then you got to subtract out that 9. So then you just get sum of 1 plus 4, 1 plus 3, I mean, and that's equivalent to 4. The sum of proper divisors of 4 is equal to 1 plus 2, which is equal to 3. Keep going. Sum of proper divisors of 3, 3 is a prime number, so the only other number that divides 3 besides itself is 1. Sum of the proper divisors of 1 equivalent to 0. It's done. Let me just write that out real quick for you. So this aliquot sequence is 9, 4, 3, 1, 0. Okay, let's get back to Catalan's conjecture. Catalan, in 1888, basically said that these aliquot sequences are going to end with basically four different, one of four types of numbers. Prime, perfect, amicable, and sociable. I'll explain those all in a minute. Let me get back to the example I just said. I actually just provided an example where the sequence ended with a prime number. Three. Once the sequence gets down to a prime number, the next number in the sequence is going to be one, and the next one's going to be zero, because the only other number that divides a prime number is one, and then the sum of the proper divides is one, it's going to be zero. So this was actually an example where an aliquot sequence ends in a prime. Okay, let's go to perfect numbers. What's a perfect number? Perfect number is basically when the sum of the proper divisors is equivalent to the number. Quick example, 6. Divisors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, don't include 6, and then 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6. All right, now let's apply that to an aliquot sequence. Let's start with, um, ooh, I don't know why I just did that, 25. That's equivalent to 1 and 5. Those are the only other divisors. That's equal to 6. Oh, sum of the proper divisors of 6, though, is equal to 6. So that means since the number repeats itself, you're done. That's the end of the sequence. This aliquot sequence is going to be 25 and 6. That's not aliquot sequence. Moving forward. Amicable numbers. So an amicable number is any number where the sum of the proper divisors of that, num that number is equal to another integer, but the sum of the proper divisors of that second integer is equal to the first integer. Interesting. Let's provide an example. Um, I believe the smallest amicable number is 220, and I'm not going to write out all the divisors because that would take a long time. Um, so you just have to trust me that this is equivalent to 284. And then the sum of the proper divisors of 284 is equal to 220. Pretty cool. So this would be 220 and 284 because this re repeats itself, so you know that the aliquot sequence ends there. And just as a note, um, this doesn't necessarily have to start with an amicable number to end in an amicable number. Just as a quick example, if you started with 562, there we go, that's not 5, 5, 562, then the sum of the proper divisors 562 is 284, and you have 220, you know that the sum of the proper divisors 220 is 284, so you know it's done there. The concept, and this is a side note that I would like to tell you about these amicable numbers that pertains to this topic is abundant and deficient numbers. 
An abundant number is basically when the sum of the proper divisors is greater than the original number. And then a deficient number is when the sum of the proper divisors is less than the original number. And so for amicable number, for an amicable pair, one of those has to be abundant and one of them has to be deficient. For example here, the abundant number would be 220 because the sum of the proper divisors is greater than 220. The deficient number would be 284. The sum of the proper divisors of 284 is less than 284. Pretty cool concept. Let's build on this with sociable numbers. Sociable numbers is kind of a more general term for this, is where instead of just having a period of two, it could be any period k. So sum of proper divisors of n1 is equivalent to n2, n2 is equivalent to n3, and it goes on until nk is equivalent to the original integer n1. And one thing I had to mention before, the most common way for these um, aliquot sequences to end are with primes, and then it gets rarer as it goes further. So the next most common is perfect, then amicable, then sociable. Um, another thing I didn't mention before was Catalan's conjecture actually has not been proven, nor disproven. So I just kind of wanted to tell you an interesting fact about that. Lamer 5. Lamer 5 is basically five numbers under 1,000 that they don't know the end of the aliquot sequence to. It's really quite interesting. And that's just due to the fact that as you get to higher and higher numbers, it's harder to find the divisor, so it's harder to get the next term in the aliquot sequence. So they don't really know if it goes on to infinity or if it just goes to some really high number before converging to either a prime, perfect, amicable, or sociable number. Um, and just another note with this, basically, as the terms approach infinity, you know that the next term, for the most part, also has to approach infinity and increase, which means that a number that would be a counterexample to Catalan's conjecture would basically have to be mostly abundant numbers. But, like I said before, Catalan's conjecture is still open to this day.